Welcome to Minister's Message. Behind me you can see some sunflowers, well, more than some. You can see all the way up to the uh, top of the field and behind the camera there is another whole row of sunflowers that have been graciously planted by uh, the farmer of this field. Uh, one reason I'm not too close to the sunflowers is because uh, there are so many bees and insects uh, flying on them, which is great. It's one of the reasons they were planted. But I think one of the other reasons was just to put a smile on our faces. The last 18 months has been difficult uh, for all of us. And so part of the reason of planting these was just to brighten our day as we walk past them, drive past them. So if you're able and you're in the village, then uh, do come and see all of the sunflowers. I was uh, told this week uh, that the sunflowers, you can see it happening, they always face in the direction of the sun. And that's a wonderful lesson uh, for us as Christians uh, to always be facing in the direction of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, to keep our eyes fixed upon him at all times. So thank you uh, for the sunflowers. Uh, we continue with Christianity Explored every Monday, 1.30pm, Hilton Church Hall. You're more than welcome. And just before uh, that, for the free lunch is resuming uh, since the pandemic, so we can't wait to be there. Uh, I hope to be able to help and serve at that where I can, and I hope to have soup and sandwiches every week <laughs> that I can uh, too. We're going to continue with our theme of suffering through the month of September. Thank you for lots of feedback from David Ellis's video last week. Please uh, feel free to be getting in touch uh, anytime uh, regarding these videos. But this week I'm going to introduce you to James and Jenny. Uh, so they're going to share with you their lives, the struggles that they've been through, but the security and the standing that they keep on finding and will always find on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. We went into it quite blasé, I suppose, didn't we? Oh, it's exciting. We're going to find out if it's a boy or girl. We'd only been in there two minutes before the snogger said, we've got a problem here. I thought, oh, the machine's broken or something's gone wrong. We're going to need to move to another room. And she said, quite matter of fact, I think your baby's got spina bifida. just changed completely. Um, what is that? Lion. A wolf. I was telling you that. What is that? Uh, a lion. A lion bird. It was apparent before we got even got married that we'd had problems having children. I mean, when we first discovered we were pregnant with Ellie, there was unbelief. Could this really be happening? Because we've been waiting for it for years. I thought, I, I don't know what this is. I don't know if, does this mean that she's going to die? So the appointment had finished. And I said, oh, we don't know. If it's a boy or girl, you haven't said. And the sonographer said, oh, you still want to know? I think there was the presumption that we would terminate. They were telling us that in all likelihood our, our little girl wouldn't be able to do anything below the waist, that her, her legs wouldn't work. That's the, the, the normal way in which spina bifida uh, affects children. Uh, and they were talking about how that could potentially cause learning disabilities. We'd have to think about it from a financial point of view as well. One of us would have to give up work. We believe that life is an absolutely precious gift from God. That he created men and women as special. We're made in his image. Every individual has immense dignity and every individual has infinite worth. We always knew the decision we were going to make and that was we wanted Ellie. There was never any question of that. There was never a choice for us. We just knew exactly what was right and what we actually wanted. We knew we just had to trust him. Mm -hmm. 
At that time as well, my mum was terminally ill with cancer, with breast cancer, and we didn't know how long she had left. We first called parents to give the diagnosis that we'd heard. Um, speaking to my mum, my mum just shrieked on the phone and she never cried, but that was crying and it was, it was wailing, really. She was just so overwhelmed with our situation and her situation. We were very, very upset. We were, we were so upset. And yet we didn't feel helpless. Um, I think actually what we felt most was a strange sense of peace. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we, we just knew that he was in control and that he was working his purposes out, even if we didn't know what they were. Yeah. I'd taken some days off to paint the room that Ellie was going to be moving into. Uh, and I suddenly woke up in the middle of the night thinking, I I've got two days off to, to paint a room for someone who may not actually live to use it. Mm. And I felt broken, I, 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 just weeping. I, I suddenly felt the Lord's love and I suddenly felt the Lord's power overwhelming me. And I just had a fresh appreciation that God is always powerful. God is always loving. God is always wise. And I just felt that, I, I, I knew that. So. Yeah, we, we experienced his love rather than doubting his love. Yeah. We went into that ces cesarean just not knowing just what to expect. We didn't know if she'd be able to breathe and we certainly didn't know if she would be able to move her legs. We were trusting in him. We were trusting that he would bring about the, the best for us. But we really didn't know what that looked like, did we? We really didn't know no. how things were going to turn out. There she was, kicking and screaming. Immediately our hearts were bursting full of love for her. He had answered our prayers that she was alive. They'd said, we'll probably take your baby away from you quite quickly. But when she was born, they saw that she was doing so well. They said, do you want to hold her? So Ellie was born in early December and mum died uh, mid-March. So, they had about four months together. She loved that baby. She loved Ellie incredibly. She couldn't let Ellie go. <laughs> she would sing to Ellie. Um, in her later days, she, she couldn't get up to pick up Ellie, so she would sit in a recliner chair in the bed and we'd place Ellie in her arms and she would hold Ellie. For anyone losing their, mu their mum, you just want that person to talk to you and you, you always think your mum is going to be there and, and be a rock and have support. My mum died. James's brother was diagnosed with leukaemia. Yeah, so he was diagnosed a week before your mum died and he lived for about nine months. He had really gruelling treatment, but in the end it wasn't successful. and. Uh, he died in December of 2011, about nine months after your mum had died. My sister is currently un undergoing treatment for cancer. Uh, Nate, our, our youngest son, he had, had chickenpox, which developed into sepsis, and so he became desperately ill. We went for a routine appointment with Livy to the hospital. The consultant there said, before we talk about what we're here for, should I want to look at that eye? There's something really wrong with the eye. She had something called orbital cellulitis, and the consultant said she's going to be admitted straight away because if that's not dealt with, that could lead to blindness. So it does feel over the years that it's been one thing after another. I, I really question God's goodness and leading and support. When Ellie was five and she did get meningitis. So at that time I just, I did crumble and I, I thought, why, why God are you doing this? It's, it's just not fair. How can you keep doing these things? She did recover and she came out of hospital and it took me a few weeks to really, to really grapple with that issue and actually see, you know, God is in control and it is his plan. It might not be my plan, but he knows what he's doing and we need to trust in that. That's not a turtle.
That's not a turtle. Yeah. The Lord says, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, and yes, I will help you, and yes, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Thanks so much to James and Jenny for sharing their story with us and of how God has been a constant for them throughout their lives. If you would like to purchase their book, uh, Helping the Suffering from Christian Focus Publications, then I'll put a link to that book down in the description of this video. Well, looking ahead to this Sunday here at Tain and Fern Free Church. This is communion weekend for us. And it's the first communion we're going to celebrate as a congregation since January 2020. So we look forward to it. Uh, in the morning, I'll be doing a preparatory service. And in the evening, I'll, that's when we'll have communion. And we're going to have it both in both congregations. So in Hilton at 5 p.m. and in Tain at 6.30. So uh, please come along, uh, come and join with us as we do this in remembrance of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Well, I do hope and pray that you have a blessed weekend and may the Lord be with you.